been asking and I've been listening. So today I am sharing with you the ultimate list of diabetes dessert recipes that taste incredible and they won't spike your blood sugar. So stay tuned because today I'm going to tell you what they are and how to make them. So you don't want to miss this. everybody, Erin here with Healthy Mom, Happy Family, and I am so excited to have you here with me today because I've kind of been noticing this big trend lately. Um, pretty much any time I post something that has to do with diabetes and dessert, you guys really seem to love it. <laughs> so I have been getting so many messages and comments about more diabetes desserts and what are the best desserts when you have diabetes to keep blood sugar in check. So today I decided to make this video especially for you. And this is one of my favorite things to do too because I love dessert. So today's video is all about the ultimate diabetes desserts. I am telling you every single diabetes friendly dessert that I personally love, my clients love, and I know you're gonna love them too. Um, I've tried all of these, but I also created all of these. So I can guarantee that they are good. And to be honest, my family likes them too, which is pretty much the ultimate test because my kids don't lie when it comes to testing desserts. So if they love them, I know you guys are gonna love them too. So as we dive into this list of diabetes desserts, I want you to know that the links to the full recipe for every single recipe I'm gonna to describe to you today are in the description below. So you can just click right on the link, it's gonna take you over to my blog so you can see the full recipe, you can save it, you can print it, you can take it with you to the grocery store to get any ingredients you need, but it's right there for you. So just look below and all the links are right there. Now also, if you are looking for more diabetes dessert ideas, I would love to give you a copy of my free ebook. It's called the 25 Low Carb Desserts You Can Make in Minutes. And it is so, so good. They're so easy, they're delicious, and I know you're gonna love it. So if you want this free ebook, there's the link below in the description. Just click it, grab it, and it'll come right into your inbox. And as we're talking all things diabetes desserts today, I just wanna remind you that if you like today's video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss new videos or any new dessert recipes that are coming out too. Okay, so who is ready for some dessert? I know I am, so let's get started. Okay, before I dive in and give you all the dessert ideas which are coming soon, I just wanted to quickly point out how you can make pretty much any dessert more diabetes friendly. Because you see, in desserts, the two most common ingredients that are gonna raise your blood sugar are added sugars and flours, especially the refined flours. So basically, if you take a dessert that you love and you swap out the added sugar with a lower carb or lower glycemic sweetener, um, that's gonna help to keep the sweetness of the recipe, but it's gonna allow you to cut down on the added sugar and improve your blood sugar management. So for instance, let's say you're making a cookie recipe and it calls for adding in a large amount of added sugar. You can swap that out with a no-calorie substitute or you could use pureed fruit instead. And when you do that, it cuts down on the added sugar and it also can add beneficial nutrients like fiber, which help to improve blood sugar response. When it comes to flour, a lot of dessert recipes call for refined flours, like all-purpose flour. And the problem with those is they digest rapidly and they raise your blood sugar. So if you want to make your recipe more diabetes friendly, just swap these out with more whole grain flours. Things like whole wheat pastry flour is really soft and a great substitute for all-purpose flour. Or oat flour, because both of these are rich in fiber, so they can slow how quickly the carbohydrates in the flour are converted into sugar in your bloodstream. Now there are options for even lower carb flour, and these are things like almond flour and coconut flour. Now you're gonna see I do use some of those flours in my dessert recipe swaps, but just want to remind you that those are not always an equal swap because sometimes you have to adjust the fluid content of your recipe. So you can't just replace almond flour or coconut flour for all-purpose flour. You do have to make some adjustments. Now I also want to remind you that dessert does not have to be zero carb to enjoy it with diabetes. It's the total amount of carbohydrate and how quickly it's digested. That's what really matters when it comes to blood sugar management. So it's okay if you want to have traditional dessert. You just have to have a smaller serving size to keep those carbohydrates lower or you can have a dessert that incorporates more protein or fiber or plant-based healthy fats because that's gonna help minimize the blood sugar response. So the big takeaway today is I want you to remember that dessert is definitely not off limits when it comes to having diabetes and managing blood sugar, but there are definitely some diabetes-friendly recipes that are better for blood sugar. And today I am sharing my top 10 favorite diabetes-friendly dessert recipes with you. Okay, so let's talk about keto chocolate cake. I mean, 
Oh my god, you guys, this is seriously one of my all-time favorites. I actually had to stop making it because I was eating a little too much of it. Um, but to make this cake, I use almond flour, which is very low in carbs, and then I use erythrol as the sweetener. Now, if you haven't heard of erythrol before, um, basically the thing you need to know about this is it's a very low calorie sweetener, and you can use it in replacement of sugar in pretty much a one-to-one -one swap. Now, the great thing about this is it's safe to consume, and it doesn't impact your blood sugar levels or even your insulin levels. And so it's a really, really great choice if you want to look for a sugar replacement, especially when you're baking, because you can bake with this, it can be heated. So it's a really nice swap for things like traditional granulated sugar you would find in the recipe. Now this cake, I didn't want to skip on the frosting because what's a cake without frosting, right? So the frosting in this is really, really sweet and I've made it uh, basically as a lower carb whipped cream frosting. So you take heavy cream, you take erythrol, you take vanilla extract, and that's pretty much it. Super easy to make. Per slice, including the frosting, you guys, this recipe contains 132 calories and only three grams of carb. It is amazing. It tastes just like a regular chocolate cake with only three grams of carb per slice. You gotta check it out. Okay, so let's talk about low sugar cake pops. Now, I don't know about you, but I think pretty much any dessert that's on a stick is just a lot more fun, honestly. So I was really determined to make cake pops that worked for diabetes management. I love cake pops and I wanted you to be able to enjoy them too. So these high protein, low sugar cake pops are pretty much exactly that. Um, what's really great about them is there's only four ingredients and it's a no bake recipe. So honestly, it could be easier to make. Each pop contains only eight grams of net carb and it's rich in protein too. So it could be a dessert, it could also be a snack. It's really up to you. Okay, let's talk about my chocolate chip breakfast cookies. Now you've probably seen this recipe before because it is one of my most popular recipes on my blog and on this channel. And that is because these cookies are so good. But what I love about them is they're actually so nutritious to eat for breakfast. I mean, they are cookies, but technically they're pretty much all breakfast ingredients. Because what I do to make these is I use pureed banana as a replacement for added sugar, and I use Greek yogurt to replace the need to add butter. So each cookie only has 64 calories, three grams of protein, and only eight grams of net carb. Now, if you want to cut the carbs even further, because these are chocolate chip cookies, I put chocolate chips in them, but you can even choose to use low sugar chocolate chip cookies if you want to take the carbohydrate content down a bit further. But they're rich in fiber, they're rich in protein, they're packed full of nutrients, so you can enjoy them for dessert, Breaking for breakfast, it's really up to you. Okay, let's talk about this keto chocolate peanut butter milkshake. I love this one so much because did you ever think that you could have a low carb milkshake that actually tastes good and was good for you? I was so excited when I created this recipe because it took a little trial and error to get it right, but it is so good and it's so simple. Um, and this one too, just like I was talking about the breakfast cookies, I mean, the ingredients in this recipe, it does taste like dessert, it looks like dessert, but it's pretty much the nutritional value of a smoothie. So you could use it as a snack on the go, even though it tastes like dessert. It doesn't just have to be a dessert recipe. Now this entire milkshake is only 209 calories. It has 14 grams of protein, 15 grams of plant-based fat, and only nine grams of net carb. So you have this perfect balance of protein, fat, and fiber, which is going to help you to stay full and satisfied. And it's also just a huge improvement over traditional milkshakes. I and mean, if you look at traditional milkshakes, they can have as much as 100 grams of carbohydrate or more, depending on what goes into them and the serving size. So that's a huge savings. This is one tenth of that with only nine grams of net carb. So if you love milkshakes, you love smoothies, you love dessert, and this one's for you. Okay, frosted watermelon pizza. I mean, can anything be more fun? <laughs> I absolutely love making this recipe, and it's you know, partly because it's so fun to make, but it's also just so colorful, and it's really, really simple. Um, all you have to do is buy a watermelon when it's in season, and you just slice it into a pizza shape. So basically, you're slicing it so you have this nice round part of the watermelon, and that's your pizza. And then you're gonna frost it with Greek yogurt. You can use unsweetened or you can use sweetened like vanilla. And then you can put any toppings you want on it. So I like to do toppings like berries for extra color. You could put nuts on it. You could do a variety of fruit. But it's pretty much one of the most fun ways to serve dessert, especially in the summertime or at a barbecue. And each slice only contains 72 calories and 13 grams of net carb. So it's basically like eating watermelon, but because you're putting the Greek yogurt on, that adds to the protein content 
And if you put the toppings on like nuts, that adds to the healthy fats and the protein. So those things have to slow down how quickly the sugar from the fruit is digested and affects your blood sugar. So really, really fun recipe and it's really a good one to get the whole family involved in making too. Okay, let's talk about sugar-free cinnamon rolls. Now, if you haven't watched my video yet on how to make these sugar-free cinnamon rolls, you need to, okay? So I'm linking to it right here. Go click on it, go check it out. But this recipe is so good. And what I love about it is you can make an individual serving and you can actually make this in the microwave, you guys. It's called a mug cake. It's so simple. You put the ingredients together, stick it in the microwave, and it's done. You don't have to bake it in the oven. Um, what I do instead of using brown sugar is I use pureed beets, and I use oats in replacement of refined flours. So those two things allow me to cut out all the refined flours and the added sugar. And I do make sure to use the cream cheese frosting, which is so good. It tastes just like the real thing. But what I do is I blend cream cheese with Greek yogurt and a little bit of no powder sweetener to get that same delicious flavor. And what I love about this recipe is how nutritious it is, but also how much better it is for you than those small varieties of cinnamon rolls that we only love, right? When they're delicious, but this tastes just as good, it looks just as good, but it's saving you a ton of carbohydrates and a ton of added sugar. In this sugar-free cinnamon roll, one serving is 172 calories and 25 grams of carb with three grams of fiber. So basically 22 grams of net carb. Now that might seem a little high for dessert, but remember if we're having this as a big portion by itself, it's fine. And if you compare that to those traditional versions, you're saving over 52 grams of added sugar and almost 70 grams of carbohydrate. So a huge savings and you still get to eat what you love. Okay, now I wanted to make sure I touched on desserts that work all year round. And that is where this keto hot chocolate recipe comes in. Um, because depending on the time of year, sometimes it's really nice to have a warm dessert or you know, something like a glass of hot chocolate in the evening. But if you think about hot chocolate and those traditional varieties, they're packed full of added sugar. And since it's liquid, it's gonna skyrocket your blood sugar even faster. But that's why I wanted to make this low carb hot chocolate mix. It only has 32 calories per serving, three grams of carbs, Plus, you're getting four grams of protein too to help you feel more satisfied and you've got blood sugar response. Now, what's great about this um, low carb hot chocolate mix is you can make a big batch, a DIY batch, keep it in the cabinet and just scoop it out whenever you're in the mood to have it. So you're essentially making your own homemade hot chocolate mix, but knowing that there's no added sugar and there's actually more protein in it as well. Okay, so I don't know, maybe this is just me, but whenever we make brownies, to me, the best part isn't really the brownies as they're cooked, it's licking the bowl, right? <laughs> licking all that batter. And I don't know, is that just me? <laughs> That's my favorite part, I love brownie batter. So I wanted to make this brownie dip recipe so it tasted just like the brownie mix, right? But without the risk of contracting a foodborne illness like salmonella from licking the bowl. So what's great about this dip is you can eat it alone, you can enjoy it with say fruit or crackers, but one serving of this only has 73 calories, it has 10 grams of net carb, and it's balanced too, because you're getting five grams of protein and two grams of fat per serving. So it's really nutritious, it's really filling, and it's just fun to eat. I mean, I eat it right off the spoon, but you can put it on a platter with some fruit as a dip. It makes a great after school snack too for the kids. It's super fun, super easy, no baking needed, and it's great for your blood sugar too. Okay, so let's talk about my diabetic sugar cookies with avocado. Now, I love sugar cookies, but I think, you know, it's pretty obvious the name sugar cookie. They're not exactly going to be blood sugar friendly. So I was determined to figure out a way to make a sugar cookie that tasted and looked just like the real thing, but didn't have the same impact on your blood sugar. And I honestly tested this recipe probably for over a month to make it perfect because I wanted it not just to taste and look good, but to act like a sugar cookie, right? And also if you look for keto sugar cookies online, a lot of them are packed full of unhealthy saturated fat with butter. And you're gonna find that that's not beneficial for blood sugar, it's not beneficial for your health. So this version I came out with, it, there's a really a great secret swap in it, right? And one of my favorite secret swaps is to use mashed avocado for replacement for butter. So in the sugar cookie recipe, I'm swapping out the added sugar, but I'm also swapping out the butter with mashed avocado. So that allows them to have the same taste and texture, just like a regular sugar cookie, but it's the good for you fat as well as fewer carbs. So try it out. I know you are gonna love these guys. Okay, so let's talk about my chocolate chip prune cookies. Now, I think 
by now it's kind of obvious since this is the third cookie we're talking about that I'm kind of a big cookie fan, right? <laughs> so one of the ideas I wanted to play around with when I made these is I wanted to make a lower sugar cookie that really tasted like the traditional recipe, but it didn't impact blood sugar in here as much. And so that's why for this recipe, I swapped out added sugar with pureed prunes because prunes are incredibly sweet, but they're actually one of the lowest sugar dried fruits. And they're very, very um, good at holding moisture. So this gives us a really delicious soft cookie and it's helping to get in more fiber during the day. Now the added benefit of this too is that eating five to six prunes per day can actually improve your bone health. Now that's something I'm really, really passionate about, especially for people with diabetes, because if you didn't know this, people with diabetes actually have a greater risk of developing osteoporosis. So we need to do everything possible we can to protect our bones. And that's where these chocolate chip prune cookies came in. So really, really fun recipe. Check it out, I know you're gonna love them. All right. Low calorie peanut butter cups. I saved one of my favorite recipes for last. And this is actually the most popular recipe on my blog. And I think it's for a really good reason. Because where else can you get a peanut butter cup that looks and tastes pretty much like the Reese's? It only has 16 calories and one gram of carb. 16 calories, right? That's crazy. Now, they're not exactly Reese's, okay? I'm not gonna tell you that you're gonna get this and think it's exactly like Reese's, but it's gonna satisfy the craving. It's gonna be as similar as you need to be in. And it's one carb and 16 calories. You can have more than one, right? So you can have plenty of them. You can keep your blood sugar in check, and it's just a terrific way to satisfy that craving when you want something like a candy, too. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my ultimate list of diabetes dessert recipes that you need to try. I promise, I promise you are gonna love them. And I wanna hear from you too. You know, when you try these, comment below, let me know which one are you most excited to try, right? I wanna know exactly which one you wanna try first. And if you've made one of these recipes, tell me what you thought. And also, if there's other desserts that you would like to see made diabetes friendly, right? You want me to work on some new recipes for you, comment below and let me know, okay? Because I'm always looking for new ideas. And if you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss new tips, tricks, and recipes. And just a reminder, if you want that free ebook on the 25 low-carb dessert, low dessert recipes that you're going to love, click the link below. And all of the recipes I mentioned today, the links are below to them too, so you can go get the recipes, print them out, and try them. Thanks so much for joining me.